Well, hello there again, everybody. Boyd here with you again. Well, we're here with another update on our 1350 scale Enterprise refit build. We're continuing on with some work on the saucer for you guys today. We left off last time with doing some modification on our BC deck here to get the uh, aftermarket bridge to fit from uh, HDA Model Works. We sanded off those little tabs on the top, got that all smoothed out. We got our officer's lounge window frame put in, the, the uh, photo etch part from the Paragraphics uh, photo etch set. Again, this is Paragraphics part number PGX111. And we use that for this little spot right here. Showed you how to work that all in and get that nice and flush. Now, the only thing that you guys have missed since the last update is that I've installed these uh, rec deck uh, window frames here at the back of the saucer. Uh, these dropped right in there. I'll show you a little picture in the sidebar of how I did that. I just took some uh, uh, scotch tape and stuck it across the outside here, and I dropped these parts in from the back. And so the tape held them in place, and then I just drilled, uh, drizzled in a little bit of... Uh, thin CA glue from the backside, waited about 10 minutes and pulled my tape and here we have it you guys. So really simple and easy to do. Didn't have to modify these openings at all. These parts dropped right in there perfectly. So we'll check it a little bit later on to see if we got light leaks around the frames or anything like that. And we'll clean that up with a little bit of putty if we have to, but that's pretty much what we're gonna, you know, what, all we need to do to this so far. Uh, we spent a little bit of time working on removing the phaser banks in the last video as well. That's an option that, like I said, you may or may not want to do. I just think it looks a little bit more accurate. And I'll show you a neat little trick for uh, putting that detail back in place uh, a little bit later on. Um, but today what we're going to be doing, you guys, is we're going to be um, working with this really nice little aftermarket uh, impulse deck from HDA Model Works. This is a really nice little setup here. Um, I'm going to take this actual part out of the bag and show it to you here to give you a comparison between it and the uh, original kit supplied part. So we have the aftermarket part here and we have the kit supplied part here. And you can see right off the bat that uh, the profile of the aftermarket part is much narrower, uh, thinner going from left to right as you can see. And the uh, there's some kind of rib detail here that's way more accurate on the back here than it is on the top here. They have these weird little box kind of things on the back side here. And it's just, you know, completely shaped different. But you don't have to do any modification to the saucer part itself here, you guys. You'd think that the, with the part being that much uh, differently shaped, that there would be this big difference in how it would fit. But it actually fits on here really, really good. And you can't really, uh, you know, see any gaps or anything like that. So... I highly recommend this. This is a nice little upgrade. It looks much more accurate than the uh, kit part. And the nice thing is, is that this is uh, done in this uh, 3D printed resin. And um, so it's already uh, diffused. We'll be able to put, you know, our lighting effects in behind this and it'll give a nice even glow and it won't look like a little hot spot on there. So that's really nice. This will take paint really well. So the nice thing about this little kit here too, guys, is that you also get included with it um, your... Um, masks which we have masks for the inside and the outside of the uh, lens there which is really important and then we have this nice little photo etch um, impulse engine grills which are really accurate to the way they looked on the studio model and these are made specifically to fit this particular part so we won't be using these parts out of the uh, paragraphic set so let's um let me get everything set up here on the bench and uh we'll get repositioned here a little bit and i'll show you you know doing a quick and easy install on this, you guys. This will go in nice and quick, and we'll show you how to get it all cleaned up with some putty, and we'll have a nice um, aftermarket impulse deck added onto our build here. Be right back. Okay, everybody, well, I'm working with the aftermarket uh, impulse deck here now from HDA Model Works, and what I started off doing here first, guys, is I applied these masks both to the inside and the outside. You can see that there's a difference between the two. Up and down this way, you can see this bottom row here is thicker than this one. So the thicker ones go on the inside, the thinner ones go on the outside. The ones on the outside, especially with the framework all the way around, they fit in there exactly right. So it might take you one or two times of dropping it in there. Now I just picked these off of here with my tweezer and, and laid them down in there. It took me one or two times to get them centered just right. Uh, you gotta kinda, kinda let them drop in kind of at an angle. I suggest kinda dropping the edge in like that and then folding it back. That way it'll tuck into that little uh, groove that's down there right off the bat. So once I got those all laid out in there straight, I just took this little uh, wooden pointer here that has a little bit of a dull tip on it. The reason I'm using the wood is because I don't want it to cut it or scratch it. And I just went around and uh, 
all these edges of this mask and I just burnished it down, you guys, to make sure I got rid of all the little wrinkles, air bubbles, anything like that, just all over the whole thing. Both sides like this, in and out. Make sure you go around all the edges. That way these will be completely sealed and they'll uh, stay undisturbed. Um, it'll be harder to put these in later on once this is already on the model onto the saucer, so I did it now. That way going forward, we don't have to worry about anything getting on here as far as paint or anything glue or anything staining that because that'll ruin our effect in there. So we want to keep those little uh, ports nice and clear. We're going to be putting the photo etch top, you know, the photo etch detail grills over the top of that from the outside later on. But so this is all prepped and ready to go now. So let's bring the, um, the saucer in here. I have it kind of ready to go here. This is a really straightforward, easy process to do. So basically, I'm just going to kind of hold it in place. You'll see that this part lines up right with all the original tabs that are on the uh, saucer, you know, right out of the box. You don't have to modify anything. It fits up there. You just want to make sure it's all nice and flush and centered. And I'm just going to kind of hold my finger on it here, down here, because we got this little part that sticks out there. We want to make sure that that's flush and we don't have to sand that off later on. Then I just got some regular um, liquid thin CA glue, and I'm just going to let this capillary action, I'm just going to put it right on this edge here. And just let that run down the sides all the way around and it'll uh glue itself in place you guys you don't need a whole flood of that i just did the one side so far it'll run all the way down there and get itself in there and we'll be able to let go and the part will start to grab all by itself after a minute or two we'll go ahead and do that over here on the other side gotta slide this over so i can keep it in camera for you guys Just watch it run right down and go all the way around the side there and line itself up. You can see it just follow that that seam perfectly. Now there is a tiny, um, there's a slight tiny gap in the, uh, where it wraps around the upper part here, which I'll show you in a second. And uh, that's no problem at all. We're gonna take care of that with a little bit of our perfect plastic putty again. Just giving this a second to grab a hold. All right, let's see what we've got. If it make sure it made good contact on the top. I'm just going to dab a little bit down this uh, flat spot right here, you guys. Make sure I get my finger out of the way so I don't glue it in. Glue it to the saucer. Just like that. All right, everybody. Well, after a little bit of drying time here, our impulse deck is in place. It came out really good. It's looking nice and centered, and nice and straight. It's all in there nice and solid. We didn't run a bunch of glue into our uh, middle part and get it stained all over the lenses or anything there, so it came out really good. So what I'm going to show you next, you guys, is we're going to seal this whole thing up with a little bit of our uh, plastic putty again. And so what I'm going to do for you guys, I'm going to make a little bit of a, what we call a slurry here. We're going to just take a little bit of this right out of the bottle and put it in our cup here. Doesn't take a whole lot. Kind of about that much right there, you guys can see. And then we're going to uh, just add a little bit of water here. Go, go really conservative on your water at first, not a whole lot. And we're just going to stir this in until we kind of get it to break down for us a little bit. I already can tell I have a little bit too much water. Let me get rid of that before we go any further. Okay. And we're just gonna, we're making a little bit of a runny paste here is what we're gonna make you guys. Not too thin, not too thick. Just a tiny little bit too much water. That's okay, guys. We'll have to put a little bit more putty in this. You're looking for a certain consistency, and I'll show you why here. Um, we're using this little plastic syringe that you can buy at any drugstore, 
and we've got to mix this thin enough where it'll actually flow through the syringe, but not too thin where we can't build up any kind of body with it, if you follow what I mean. I want this to fill these little gaps here just a little bit, but I don't want it to be like, you know, too runny like water. So right now it's just, a, it's, it's a little bit too thin. Otherwise, what will happen if it's too thin, it'll just sink in there, you guys, and won't really do anything. So let me put just a tiny little bit more. I hadn't made any of this in a couple of months, so I kind of forgot my ratios here. After you do this a few times, you'll get used to it, you guys, and you'll be able to knock it out right off the bat. <clears throat> get the right consistency with this stuff. There we go, that's looking better. And again, this will turn completely hard once it's... Uh, dry basically like plaster or something like that so now we should be able to draw a little bit of this up inside of our syringe here got that pulled up in there and we'll just kind of push a little bit out and see what the texture looks like here it's too thin or too thick yeah it might be might be just a little bit too thin still you guys let me try a little bit more putty here you want to get, like I said, you want to get this right where the, the syringe can pull it in, but it's, you know, it's still got some body to it. Okay, so. Yeah, that's better. That should do it this time. You can basically tell when you're getting it close because it'll it'll kind of pull up into the syringe kind of slow it won't just flow right in there instantly there we go that's what I'm that's what I was looking for okay so we'll get a little shop towel here in case we get too much and we're just gonna go around this you guys just on the the top edge here like this just squeeze out a nice little bead Let's come around the side here and that'll be it, you guys. Okay. And then we'll see how much that, um, we're just gonna have to let this dry now. We'll let, we'll let that, uh, See how much that shrinks in there? Like I said, sometimes it'll shrink back in there a little bit, especially when it's made a little bit thinner like this. And if it does, that's no problem. We'll just come back around with another bead once that's fully dry, and then we'll uh, go from there. All right, I'll be right back and show you how it looks, guys. Okay, everybody, we're back again with you here. We allowed our putty to dry for a little bit. You can see we've got our uh, impulse deck all worked in here now. I really like the improvement. I think it looks a lot more accurate to the uh, studio model now. It's definitely worthwhile to work with one of these. There's several different ones out there, but this one from HDA is a really nice one. And it, I like the fact that it comes with these extra little parts. You can see we've got it all masked off and ready to go. So after I putty dried, guys, all I did is I came back in here with this little Q-tip, dipped it in some water, and I just went around these little beads of uh, putty that I put on here and just kind of smoothed it out. It took about two times of doing that, and then we've got it all worked in. Um, there are a couple little spots here and there I can see are going to need to be filled by hand and then uh, actually sand it to get rid of a little bit of a hard line that's there. 
but we're gonna leave that till later. Once we get this all primed and everything, once we finish all the rest of the work on this saucer, uh, then I'll be able to tell exactly what I need to do and that'll just be some quick and easy cleanup. And uh, that'll be done just before we get ready to put the saucer halves together. And we'll show you that a little bit later on. So what I've got now, you guys, is I got this really nice little set of aftermarket parts that came in, some 3D printed parts for our impulse crystal here at the top and our, uh, our rec deck area, the interior area that we uh, worked on to get these little photo etch window frames put in. So I'll grab those out of the box here and bring them back on the bench and show you what we got. Be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back again, and I've got these little aftermarket parts laid out here on the bench for you. I want to say a big shout-out to Russ Wall over at HobbyWorks.com. Russ uh, does some 3D printed parts for the Enterprise Refit and several other models in different scales. You can check his uh, stuff out at uh, www.hobbyworks.com. I'll put that up on the screen here for you. And we got some really, really cool stuff, and I want to show it to you guys. Uh, some of this stuff I'm going to be using and some of it not. Um, the first thing I'll show you here, guys, is we got this really nice rack deck here. And uh, I'm not going to pop it out of the bag just yet, but I'm going to show you the, the, the thing that I like about this right off the bat is that uh, several of the other 3D printed rack decks that are out there, they're all printed in one piece already, which is going to make that um, really difficult to paint because you've got to get back in all these little nooks and crannies. And there's a whole bunch of little... Um, if you go and look at the film when they show the rack deck area... There are a whole lot of different colors going on uh, on the stuff that's on the floor, the stuff that's, you know, the, the beams that are on the walls are different colors, the background where the view screen is. There's just a whole bunch of stuff that you're going to have to work on, and it'll be a whole lot easier to try to paint all this stuff and then assemble it than it will be trying to do that with one solid piece. So, um, you know, that's something to think about, but you can kind of see the detail here. Here's the, 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 the kind of wall in the background and the, uh, the view screen area. There's some nice little inserts that go in. I think in the back of the view screen, you don't get really any instructions with this, but I think you can figure it out um, just by, you know, mocking it all up and, and looking at what you got here. But this is going to be really nice. We've got a nice uh, cargo pod and cargo container assortment here that are, you know, different than the ones that come with the standard parts in the kit or the uh, photo etch parts. And these are already assembled for you. So all you got to do is just paint them and they look like what we saw being towed around by the worker bees and stuff like that. There's some small little detail parts that go on these on some of these little trees that are in here. Um, just really, really nice. This is something that he sent that I thought was kind of cool. Um, this is a what, what he's calling his BC deck detail. Now, this basically, I kind of had to figure out what this was exactly at first, you guys. But what I figured out here is that um, I'm not sure if you use this whole part here. You're just going to cut this piece off of it, I think. And if you look at it, this is the... Um, the uh, interior hallways what they look like on the enterprise refit and so what you would have here is you you'd cut this piece out guys and you would stick it up underneath of the uh, let me grab the saucer again here really quick and you'll stick it up underneath of the bc deck like this of course you know having this big piece removed and just gluing this in here and so what you would see then is if you actually uh go in here and you work on these windows right here and you make these you know totally clear like using some thin acetate or whatever so you could really look in there and have it perfectly clear you'd be able to look in those windows and then see the detail of the um, you know paint these up that kind of brushed aluminum look like they were on the enterprise refit and you'd be able to see that detail in there so that's just kind of cool something a little extra you, you might want to add to your model uh, i'm not going to be quite taking it that far on this one but it's just a little option you could have if you wanted to do that for some more detail um then we have um some various uh, 1350 scale couches that he's printed up here. So if you are going to do more interior work and maybe want to add more detail into your arboretum or into your officer's lounge area, you could do that. Um, you've got some 1350 scale chairs here and cargo, it says. So there's some different, you know, little parts you can add to that. These look like the kind of Star Trek looking chairs. So you can kind of put those in various places. Again, if you're going to be doing some interior work. Some tables, the same thing. These are all, again, in 1350 scale. So so really cool stuff. Now, this one item he sent me right here, I'm kind of curious about. Now, this is, uh, it looks to me like this is the um, impulse crystal setup for the, I, when I first looked at the part, I thought it was for this model, for the 1350, but I, I, looking at it, I'm. it's looking like it's for the 1537 kit because this is a really 
nifty idea that he came up with here. And you can see on the top, you can't all see the little rib detail on here, but he's got some like fine mesh um, printed onto the top of that. So that, that would be your crystal on top of the 1537 scale refit. And then what you would do is you would glue this, you'd glue that in and you'd glue this little disc in from below. And that will be your light blocker and your little light box that we always have to build for that model because it doesn't, you know, we, we need to enclose that light so it doesn't leak out into all the other stuff or leak into the impulse engines that are directly behind it. So what I basically wrote to Russ and asked him, I just sent him an email. Uh, I'm not sure if he offers this in uh, the same setup for the 1350 scale because if he did, it would be wonderful because I don't see anybody else out there that has anything like that. Uh, the nice thing about that is, is that, you know, you could just, you can see he's got the hole here in the center to mount your uh, five millimeter LED, which would be perfect. And then if this disc could glue on the bottom of our impulse uh, circle right there, and then this crystal could be made larger to fit the, uh, the 1350, you'd have a perfect setup there. I like this because all you have is the little fine mesh detail on there. And so you can use the, um, I prefer to, there's a, there's a couple guys out there that are making this, um, with the cage on top, right? And then, and the crystal goes underneath of it in a 3D printed version. And it's nice, but what I really don't like about it is that the cage um, being on top of it like that is gonna look really too thick, the legs of it. I like to use the, the you know, the regular photo etch part because it'll sit down there really flat and be really fine, you know, detail like it's supposed to be on the studio model. So that's just a, you know, kind of a pet peeve or whatever, but um, uh, that same thing could be done if this was made a little bit bigger. You could just put your photo etch, you know, cage over the top of that crystal on the outside, which is, will be, when we add it to our model, that'll be one of the very last things we do because that's a really um, delicate, fragile part. And you, you want to have all your painting, all your work basically done before you add little details like that onto the model. But this goes in um, before you close the saucer up. Um, we'll just have to see what Russ says. Maybe he actually does offer this in the, in the 350 scale already, but... If not, maybe he can scale this up pretty easily and uh, have basically the same thing because I think this would be a, a really great setup. You don't have to worry about making your own light box, like I said, anymore. You can just glue that on and put the crystal on top and you'd be all ready to go. That'd be a nifty little setup. Okay, well, that's a wrap for this video, you guys. My apologies for being a gap in between the last one and this one. We did some fall cleaning around here and we had uh, Halloween and all that good stuff. So I'll be back to doing regular updates. I'm going to try to get uh, at least one update on this model out to you guys uh, every week. Um, but like I said, guys, we're not, you know, you know, I don't want to be in a big hurry on this. I've still got some other stuff I'm uh, waiting to come in for it that I need before I can go any further to. But we should be okay. We'll move right along here. Hope you're enjoying the build series. And uh, I want to wrap up by telling everybody, don't get intimidated by this model, you guys. There's a lot of people out there that say that the... Um, Enterprise refit, you know, the 350 is a, is a widow maker or it's, a, you know, the Mount Everest of Star Trek models. And it is a difficult model, but what I'm trying to show you here on this build series, you guys, is that uh, it's not only the, um, you know, the techniques of how to work on a model, but, you know, just planning out your methods and just going slow and steady. Um, don't cross, you know, try to cross one bridge before you get to it. Don't worry about the wiring coming later or the, uh, you know, the lighting or the painting or anything. Just kind of focus on one little section at a time, work your way through it, and don't, you know, don't put any kind of time limit on it for yourself. And um, you can come out just fine, and hopefully this little build series here will, will help you along the way. And then, as I always recommend, check out other videos on YouTube that you can find of other builders and, and see what kind of techniques they're using. What I show you here is, is a, a lot of it's the way I like to do it, uh, but there are other really effective ways of getting things done out there that work really well too, so... That's why the YouTube community is so great, you guys. You can, you know, unlimited amount of uh, access to information, and that's what it's all about. All right, you guys, we'll be back again pretty soon, and we're going to have, in between then and now, we'll have another update on the 72-inch Enterprise for you. We'll see you then, everybody. Take care, and happy modeling.